Hello and welcome to another time lapse commentary. My name is Eric, and today we'll be talking over the Stray Lantern build. So, uh, with this build, I think I did this one after a little bit after Thanksgiving because I just kind of passed by. <laughs> And uh, the reason why there was a small gap between maps being released, I think it was, it was quite some time, um, relatively speaking. My desk chair broke, like the back part where it kind of holds in place my perfect back rest position. It broke before, a little bit before Thanksgiving, so... And since I was displaced from my home from that winter storm all those many, many months ago that tore through Texas and, like, fucked our shit up. So, I, you know, I only have one chair, like a, a proper desk chair. Everything else that I could get is, like, shit. So uh, I was like, eh, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. So I did some stuff with the chair being broken, and it was, like, not a good position to rest my back with. So I fucked up my back, not my back. I fucked up like my, all my, all my muscles on the back of my neck and in between my shoulder blades. It all felt like it was all attached to one thread at like the base of my spine where the, the base of my neck where my spine is. And then like someone was just attaching that thread to like the back of a car and that car was just constantly just hauling ass. And it was just, it felt like my muscles just wanted to jump out of my skin backwards constantly. So I was like, okay, I shouldn't have fucking done that. <laughs> Sitting in that busted ass chair was not a good idea. Um, but I was like, you know, I, I, I was in the groove. I wanted to put out a, I wanted to fucking put out a video <laughs> and, make, and make shit. Once I felt that, I was like, damn, uh, this is very uncomfortable and this is only going to get way worse if I keep doing this. So I just had to ditch that chair and. I went to Staples and found a really nice chair, but they were sold out in store. So uh, they said, oh, we can deliver. I was like, uh, they were like, yeah, I'll be there by Wednesday, which at the time when I was ordering it, it was like three days away. I was like, oh, perfect. I won't miss, I won't miss too much days of work, like uh, working on the computer. Cool. Yeah. Well, that was also the week leading up to Thanksgiving. And uh, I should have known better not to expect that shit. That guy fucking tricked me. I mean, what else was I going to do? Fucking just not get the chair. I needed a fucking chair. So the worst possible time to order aside from like before, right before Christmas. So of course, naturally it got delayed like crazy. And so, so the whole time I just like stared at my desk with no chair in, in, in it, like, you know, attached to it. It's like, wow, I want to use my computer just to do computer stuff. But I, I can't because it's just ungodly uncomfortable to just like sit in a busted ass chair or any other chair for that matter. So I was like, nope, I'll just wait. I'll just wait. It's no, there's no reason I should fuck up my back or my body just to make a fucking video. I'll just wait an extra week or two, which is what it took. And then like that threw off my whole fucking groove. And uh, <laughs> so when I got back to making maps, th this map, it, it probably won't show up in the video, like the time lapse, but I was very, very like uh, out of it because I was in the chair and I was resting my back and doing all this stuff to relax it and everything. But, oh my God, I was just like, I wasn't in a bad mood, but I I was in a really weird funk that I didn't realize I was in. I felt like I was in like a fucking, like a daze or something when I was working on this map. But any of the time, I didn't feel like that. So it was like, God damn, what is, what is up with me? Like, ugh, I can't. My focus is good, but... I'm making like a bunch of rookie mistakes the entire time I made this map. I made a bunch of rookie mistakes. I was like, I like set myself back mentally temporarily, like fucking years. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Why am I making all these fucking shitty mistakes? Because this map, it's big, but it's not like super hyper detailed. They're like, 
That was a lot of really complex areas because it's it's just literally just like a big box area with uh, another big box area on top. Excuse me. And um, yeah, it should not have taken, I think it was what, like 12 hours or 11, 12 hours, some of that. So I could tell this is going to be a long one. There were so many times when I was making this map that I, I just fucking, I, I worked on it for like hour and a half, stopped recording, stood up and just walked away for a bit and then came back and did another like hour and a half chunk. Because usually, usually when I'm ready to like edit the raw footage, I usually have about four or five videos in total to work with. This one I had like roughly 13, 13, 14, which is insane for something that this, something this short, for something this non-complex and just didn't eat up a lot of any other, anything else besides just me being frazzled. Anyway, like I said before, these videos are going to turn into just like essentially like, I don't know, fucking podcasts or whatever, because not much else to really discuss on the map unless well when it arises I'll point stuff out but for instance this map um a lot of my past maps recently were like had like a water stuff to them so with this one I was like ooh I want to do some fire stuff and I had this really cool red wall I wanted to work with and it's very appropriate because the area in my campaign that this place is in is like real deserty and arid and stuff like that. So uh, that worked out perfectly. I found the exact wall that I needed. But I wanted to use a lot of fire stuff. So I uh, haven't done it in a while, but I made the, like see what I'm working on right now? It's like the fire pit thingy. I had to make a custom shape in Photoshop, which was not hard at all. It's like a, hmm, I don't know, I forgot my basic shapes, hexagon or octagon. Octa's eight. How many sides is this? I don't know, too fast to count. Anyway, I made the little shape, right? Um, solid black and then imported it. Boom. Which usually I only use custom shapes like that for hiding when the floor bleeds out. Like the floor texture bleeds out into the green table because the area I'm building has got like a really awkward shape. The best example I can give is like the uh, airship that I have released. From a while back that one uses a lot of the cover-up stuff with custom shapes i'll just turn uh ooh, well i'll talk about that in a minute but so uh all i did was i just turned my camera to uh right click anywhere in the void that's not like the table and then click camera type uh top down excuse me top down right it, it's a uh, and then just take a screenshot uh, of anything. Um, I use like yeah, Giazzo, <laughs> but you can use anything else just to take a screenshot and then pop it into like Photoshop or whatever. Trace over. I do like the shape tool. Just trace over what part of the floor texture bleeds out onto the table. Make it the same color as your table, and then just uh, yeah, then you have your custom shape that's the same color as your table import it into the game and then just uh shape it not shape it stretch it around where you need it to be and it should fit perfectly because the top down view gives you like the best possible angle to just trace trace out the area that you want to cover up and then boom and then no one will ever know aside from like a slight shadow casted where you're kind of hiding that custom shape it's a lot less of a headache than actually going in and trying to find the texture you're trying to use to cover the floor and make a custom shape out of that. It's much easier just to cover up a few corners that kind of snag here and there. You have to worry about, you know, slicing apart the texture, which and then it might look funky because that's what I first tried to do. That was a fucking nightmare and mm, didn't work so hot. Speaking of hot, so this is also like the new bonfire thing. I was going to use the original like wood stuff on the floor, but then I was like, no. I want to do something different because it's not like a big campfire. I wanted to make it look more like a proper bonfire, bonfire thingy. So I 
which I talked over it, but essentially what I did to get the effect of all the sticks kind of all leaning up against each other in the thing, which was uh, I just put the fucking Chinese checkers board in between all the leaning sticks and then I just uh, deleted it and then they all fell into each other and it was perfect, so. Shit kind of like that uh, you can kind of do to get away with a lot of cheats instead of having to go in and manually you know, tilt sh- shit one by one and everything. So letting the physics in the game do the work when when you can helps a lot. Speaking of which, it's nothing it's nothing that I'll do anytime soon, but it's definitely something I want to do in the future because first and foremost, if I do anything else besides making these types of videos just to keep the channel alive, I'll be making D&D or Shadowrun series on YouTube. And that should be like a weekly episode released, about 30 minutes. But what I have planned going forward, though, with the channel is that I want to do um, tutorial videos on how I make maps. So it's not necessarily... It's the best way I make maps, but it's not necessarily the best way that, you know, any one way to make maps in Tabletop Simulator. There's countless fucking ways to make maps. But I will just be demonstrating and walking people through how I organize, how I, my process, you know, for making maps and everything like that. Because by that point, I'll have it down, I'll have it down like super, super like streamlined, I guess. Because even now I'm still learning little techniques in there to increase productivity and like speed things up and, you know, cutting corners and everything like that. So. But I feel already like I'm like, I'm like really close to just, you know, having that shit nailed down. Anyway, so like I want to do stuff like that because that'd be really fun just to, um, that way if anyone wants to kind of know the process of how I make the maps and they want to make them themselves, they can. Because the way I do my maps is actually really, really easy. But I think a big part of that is being organized with like your assets and stuff like that if you don't organize your shit properly it's just like a lot more difficult as you kind of go down the road because i think planning out everything with like drawing lines and just putting up walls is like super simple but yeah i think the first part of the series will probably be just like how to organize how i will be like how to how i organize my shit because it's not exactly difficult um but it is just like you know, neat little tricks and stuff like that you can work with the game. And uh, hopefully it'll be useful to people who have had this software for a long time and people who are fresh to Tabletop Simulator in general. Anyway, to those of you who have been, one, actually watching and listening to these entire fucking, like, commentary tracks over these time lapses, like, kudos to you. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Here's a reward for listening (laughs) uh, to these because this is like non-official, completely just between me and you, right? This is a secret. Don't tell anybody, okay? And like I said, non-official, but the D&D series will be picked back up and start filming in as late as... um, the end of January next year. So 2022 of January 2022 is when I will probably 99% sure I will be filming again and I'll start doing interviews for uh, new players to join the channel. I have two set up currently. One guy for sure stuck around all those months. I don't know about the other guy, but they both said they'd be fine waiting and they had no fucking choice. Like, you know, and I'll explain that in another video. It's like, I'm not going to get into all the details, but, you know, I'll actually start sitting down with people and interviewing them and put them through the um, trial campaign and stuff like that. But the entire time that I've, the entire time, like from forever ago, uh, I've been accepting applications to join the table so yeah um i've gotten a lot 
but not very many people uh, take it seriously. And that's kind of what I'm looking for first and foremost is like, you know, you got to take it seriously. So um, a lot of them are just like, they just want something to do on a weekend. And it's like a massive, massive thing. And it's very detailed. And I just, I don't understand what they don't get when they read that, which obviously they don't. And then they just say like, hey, I want to play. And that's, that's the whole, that's the whole like, applications like okay thanks thanks that's uh thank you for your time <laughs> but yes i can safely say unofficially that the D D will begin filming again mm, as late as the end of january next year it could be sooner but it would, it would, if anything, if anything, at the earliest, it would be uh, sometime maybe beginning or mid January 2022 uh, is when I'll kick things back up. And before all that, you guys would get like a whole video with me on camera explaining like everything. Uh, Plus or minus some details um, for people's privacy, but like you, you guys will, you guys will be informed on what the fuck happened ever since that goddamn winter storm that obliterated Texas off the goddamn map. Yeah, for sure. I'll probably take care of that video sometime in December. But anyway, any anyway, uh. Yeah. What was I going to say? Oh, so I have some someone very dear to me, someone very, very close to me, who's coming to visit in December. So <laughs> I, uh, I probably will be really busy in December, like mid-December to the end. Yeah, yeah, actually, actually from mid-December and onward, I'll be very occupied with visiting a friend who is coming back from uh, the military. And uh, I just, yeah, I, I, I would fucking <laughs> set the world on fire for them. So uh, if I don't, if, if videos become slower in December, which is like next month, then that would be why I would be spending time with them. But... After that, then shit, dude. I I'm pretty sure we'll be back in full swing. Like as much as much of a swing in as I possibly can muster. Um, but yeah, so there is your scoop if you actually pay attention to these videos. And if this is like far in the future and I've already resumed the videos, then um then none of that's gonna be too interesting, I guess. But <laughs> oh well. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? What was I going to say? Ah. Uh, I'm drawing a blank. Why am I drawing a blank? These doors are throwing me off. These fucking doors. Well, well, let's talk about the doors real quick, right? So the doors have like these big open bars on them. And a, a, like a big part of me wants to put something behind the bars in the image so that they're not just like an open window. But I, I always stop myself because it's like, no they're just cooler looking doors that kind of fit the style of the place so i would like if i was using the map i would just assume that there is like you know a metal shutter that kind of slides behind them just so like they're more secure because <laughs> if your front doors of your business have massive holes on them yeah you're getting robbed day one yeah it's just that's you know, we'll just pretend that those actually have like metal shutters that lock or something that just kind of slide and whatnot. So anyway, kind of like this door, this blue door, how it does have a shutter, a little slider, the viewport, whatever you want to call it. This map is again going in the campaign or potentially could be in the campaign. So like I said, it was a lot of stuff with fire. 
but I needed it to be just because originally it was just like a very basic in. I, you know, <laughs> it was actually just the in I had released a long time ago. And I think I just shifted the furniture around because because at the time when I needed it, um, we were playing before like we we we, we for we rewound time and fucking scrapped like hours of footage because uh, it wasn't too hot. So I figured that um, this one, I'll give it a good go when I make it and, you know, make sure it fucking slaps. And I think it does a pretty good job. I had, I was on, I made this one on the fly. I, I didn't have any real idea aside from the fire when I made it initially. So the having the bar raised in the middle and it's like a full 360 bar was kind of how it all kicked off and then it just had everything kind of sprout around from the, from that point. And I knew I needed it to have rooms to accommodate because the city that it's attached to, I don't have any other place for the PCs to kind of bunk as like a general, like if they don't know anybody, any other characters in the city, then it's like, where's, you kind of always need like at least, at least one place that people can go to like a tavern or a bar that in my case I needed to also accommodate excuse me um people to sleep in or something like that room and board and all that shit so but yeah look here we go again I got way more way more fucking dedicated to the putting of textures inside of like walls and stuff like that so it's not just like the exterior wall in every single room so but i'm probably never going to go overboard with that and like fill up fucking offices and stuff like that with that interior like decor like to see with the bathroom except except when i make uh, oh look i loaded in the other map to grab oh the vault wall thingy yeah, 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 because it's for like the coat check slash weapon check room. Anyway, I won't put that much detail unless it's like a smaller map because if it's a smaller map, then obviously I have a lot more free time and to just like go nuts. And since it's not going to be a lot of assets as far as making the room large, I'll make it highly detailed and it still will load quickly, be extremely easy to use and some of that stuff. So. Although with this map though, I was worried that I was going to put too much shit in it near the end because I, I wanted to do like a full decoration of all the rooms upstairs, but that's 18 rooms that I wanted to make super individual and decorate like crazy. But I did that once in the past in the hotel. It wasn't that many rooms, but it was essentially the entire map with like all unique hotel rooms, which I, I did eventually make them all unique and some of that, but I didn't, um, ended up having to scale back all the decorations and shit like that. Hmm. Oh, look, and those are from, I want to say it's Mahjong. Could be totally wrong. But I, they look, they look really cool and they kind of remind me of like weapon cases. So now I just label them weapon cases and then just put them all there. But I, those are from like early, early, early when I started making maps. So early that they were never in any maps. I don't think I ever officially released on the channel. It was a long, long time ago. Oh, okay. So here's a new, here's another new method I found. See, okay. See like how I put that into the wall and then shrunk the back towards the front. Like, see this one? See how the back black part of it sticks out the wall on the other side? That's a, it's a new trick I learned on how to make it a lot easier to double check and able to fix stuff before you, like, make it permanent, I guess. Because what you do is you let, like, leave it thick and push it into the wall to, to like, the desired section or, like, um depth that you want, right? And then you could zoom out and check if it's 
flickering, the texture's flickering and shit. If it's not flickering and you're good to go, then you could just come back in and see how I did it there. I just pushed the ass that was sticking out uh, into the wall until it was concealed. Uh, before, which is a really bad way I used to do it, was I would not put it in the wall at all, sometimes not even near the wall, shrink it down to super thin to where I would, you know, I would think it would kind of fit snugly in a, into the wall, basically just kind of being like a very, essentially flush with the wall. And then I would just inch it until I didn't see anymore and then, you know, inch it back out and then until it was good. But then if you do that and you notice that the texture is flickering because it's just like a little too, like it was literally layered um, or it's inside the wall texture, then it'll flicker. And But see, you've already shrunk it so much that you can't grab it unless you move the wall. Not a big issue if you if you build your maps the way I have been building them recently, which is, you know, punching in individual numbers to where they align on like the XYZ axis, stuff like that. Not an issue because then you can just move the wall and grab your shit. But then you got to go back and forth with putting the wall back and so on and so forth, right? The new method, like I was saying, is that um, since the back part s- sticks out the wall, and you ha- if you notice you have an issue with it, then you can just grab the back part and then adjust it accordingly until you know for a fact you're good to go. It's not flickering. And then all you got to do is just hide the back part into the wall. And that's it. Simple as that. So that's another new thing I figured out. Uh, but yeah so this one this central part that green texture initially I was going to use that for Club Calypso because it was kind of like this really cool green bluish color kind of reminds you of the ocean so I was like ooh that'd be really nice I don't I don't think I might have but I don't think I did use it in Club Calypso but I thought it looked really neat next to all the fire and stuff like that. It's kind of like, this place is really hot, but if you want to get yourself some moisture, you can come to the place that's kind of looks like it has moisture. Aside from, you know, having all the drinks and stuff sticking on top. But don't worry, at this place, I also put fire on top of it, so there's that too. I felt like I just needed, you know, some more pizzazz, so I was like, you know what would be cool? Some fucking fire on top of the bar, so... Ooh, you know, here's something I wanted to talk about. That show on Netflix, Arcane, it's like League of Legends. I never thought I'd say this if I'd animated, a 3D animated uh, show. I could probably count it on one hand. This is probably the first time in a very long time. Uh, yeah, because I can't even recall the last time I said something good about an animated series. TV, a 3D animated series, right? So anyway, it's like, it's so, and it's so good. It is so fucking good. Like, holy shit, it's so good. Beforehand, I had no, I had less than zero interest in League of Legends. I know nothing about League of Legends except for all the porn of the characters. That's about all I know of it. So I recognized all the characters immediately. I was like, oh, that's League of Legends. Cool. But yeah, holy shit. Such a fucking great show. So good. Animated. Beautifully. Spectacular. And the story is actually not hot garbage either. Because usually when you have something good, the uh, second half falls apart. But it genuinely fucking nails it in every aspect. And I won't talk about any spoilers about the show or anything like that. So don't worry about it. But there's always times when I was a kid when I was watching cutscenes in video games. And I'd be like, man, what if they just made a whole movie in the style of this cutscene? That'd be amazing. That's kind of what I was hoping the World of Warcraft movie would be. Like basically just their cinematics, but in movie form. And that's what they should have done. You're literally just printing money at that point if you just do that. It's like, yeah, it's like an hour and a half cutscene. 
in the style that you guys always do, which is like fucking amazing. And there you go. I mean, you can't, you cannot fuck that up. But yeah, that's, that is, that is, that thought um, as a child is finally, finally realized with Arcane. It's, uh, it blew my, it blew my fucking mind. League of Legends is cool. I got exposed to it a little bit when I was staying with JD because he was talking about, he's really into fighting games and um, JD's a friend of mine. He, he mentioned that they were going to make a League of Legends fighting game. And so I saw a little bit of that and uh, I was like, oh, that could be cool. Personally, I don't play, I don't play fighting games. I don't think I ever have. The only fighting game I ever played was like Smash Brothers off and on throughout the series, like from 64 until current. But I'm in no way good, nor do I personally enjoy them. Which is odd because whenever JD talks about fighting games, he's so knowledgeable and like very good at them that I'm, I get like, a, you know, a, a secondhand fucking high of his hype and his knowledge. So I'm actually really interested in like, <laughs> the idea of playing fighting games but if i play fighting games i want to like you know be like him and like learn focus down a character and learn and lab and shit but <laughs> to be good to be actually even just good with a lowercase g right in fighting games you gotta put you gotta put in the fucking work and that takes a lot of time and effort so i was like damn dude uh, I can't do that. I can't. I just, because I know if I do, I'll, because I know I can do it, right? But then that, I just, I go too hard in the pain with it. So I'm like, yeah, and I can't. That'll squander everything else I wanted to accomplish with like tabletop role playing games. Just so sad because, yeah, it could be, it could be a lot. Of, it looks like so much fucking fun. It looks like so much fun. I love watching fighting game tournaments, like high level play. It's, 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 it's disappointing because I still don't know what I'm seeing. But, you know, like when JD was watching them with me, he would be able to explain what I was not seeing and like all this technical jargon about fighting games. Like, you know, I was always fucking floored whenever he would talk about that stuff, which is amazing. And then we also watch a ton of fighting game documentaries and some like of that too. That shit is super interesting. My gosh. And a lot of times <laughs> I'll I'll catch myself looking up the Daigo, the the Daigo Perry <laughs> just because it's, you know, it's so fucking hype and shit. But yeah. So this map, right? It's cool. <laughs> Uh, no, I have nothing really else to really add right now to the map as far as it, I mean, it's going well. Yeah, what about, I'm in the office right now. Yeah, not really too many issues here. I think later on, later on uh, this is the very first map I've ever made where the second floor, yeah, the second floor up does not... I'm sorry, it does connect with the lower floor. You'll even see later on, I initially tried to just make it with like the black shape. So when you go up the stairs, you, tell, you, you, know, you have to teleport yourself to the second level, which I was going to have like hover off table and whatnot. It's so strange. I didn't, I didn't even... It's so silly to me, actually. Because I didn't even really test the theory of would this map work if I put a second floor directly over the first floor, right? Because most objects that you move around, like the character portraits over that, they have auto raise toggled on. An auto raise is a feature where if you're moving a character around and you come across like any other object, it will make them float over it. So you can easily move shit around the table. Because otherwise, it will snag on things and it will 
crash and get stuck on walls if you have it toggled off. So I was like, I just had blind faith that it would work out and not want to auto-raise to the second floor every time you move a character on the first floor. Sure enough, thank fucking God the developers in this game are so goddamn awesome that the only way the only the only way your character's gonna want to fly over something is if you are drawing you are trying to drag it over a specific object. Did that even that didn't sound right? I feel like I fucking slurred my words. If you're trying to drag it over a specific object. Oh god. That was so weird. I was like talking without even listening to myself. Holy shit. But yes. Luckily, I, I built everything and set it all up. And then I think later on in the road, I, I, ch I checked if someone could walk underneath it and sure enough, they could. So that was good. That was really good. That worked out well. Which kind of opened up a Pandora's box for me of like what all I could do of uh, multi-level areas. Because now think about this, right? The only downside is something that I wish I could disable though is um, the shadow that's cast from the objects above other objects because, you know, this game has like light and stuff like that. And there might be a way to fuck with that. I might need to just go into the lighting and mess with it because there's like a lot of settings which I'm always thankful for. I just gotta mess with it. Yeah, so it does cast a shadow. Thankfully though, there's different lighting options to where like the character portraits that have shadows casted on them, they don't dim. So those still look bright and everything and they're really readable. It's like a little darker, but it's it's well worth the effect of having a floor directly over the characters. I think. So yeah, it doesn't bug me in the slightest. But anyway, what I was saying earlier was wouldn't it be amazing though? If I had like an area with like say four floors actually stacked on top of one another. Now I need to, I need to, okay, before I act on that, I, that one I need to actually test because that one could get dicey, but that would be fucking cool as shit to actually, to actually have stuff <laughs> like, you know, built over one another. I think the only problem I'll run into is that if you don't give yourself enough space, like an air gap between the floor you're looking at and the floor above it, you're going to run into problems with the camera, which I learned with this map, which is cool. But luckily, I just got, I just got lucky that your camera, when you're maneuvering it on the lower floor, does not snap through the upper floor. And by that, I mean it does, but... There's a comfortable amount of distance you can keep yourself, like the camera from the characters you're looking at, to where it's not an issue. So going forward, when I do try that in the future, I just need to make sure that I leave a good amount of space to, yeah, but for the camera to be kind of flying around on each floor of the building. I think I'll just have to test it by putting solid blocks um, to mimic the floors and just try and find a comfortable height. And you know what I need to do is once I find a comfortable height, I need to just save, I'll, I'll name it like, I'll just name it comfortable height and then save it in my little chest. That way, every time I want to build uh, vertically like that with connected floors, I can just spawn it, put it on the table, and that'll be like my measuring stick where I know like, okay, this is the Y axis. Hell, that's even a better idea. Find the Y axis and just write it down. Hell. Name the object the y axis number. That way I just always know. And I don't need to worry about like keeping it in a separate note pattern like that. It'll always just be attached to like my measuring stick. Anyway, um yeah, so that would be that would be really, really, really cool. Messing with these messing with these like putting these couches all around here I wasn't sure doing it was such a best idea just because I was like it's probably too much shit not even like uh design wise but just like um too much too many objects on the table to load 
because I knew I was going to have a whole second floor. Uh, so I was like, uh, because I really wanted to put couches like in more places, but I think I put just enough. So there's still like a lot of open space. People just walk around because there's no real, hmm. Yeah, there's no real place for like performers to perform, right? But what I was thinking was if like say in game, if someone wants to like perform here, this building has two, it's insane, like grand staircases where the first part where it kind of levels off to split into two other stairs that go higher is fucking massive. So what I was thinking is if in game, if someone ever wants to perform there or do anything and have like a stage, they can just sit on the staircase because it's like just a huge amount of open flat space right there that's elevated. Um, so everybody can kind of gather around and what's nice is that the area around the base of the stairs is really open and empty, so that's perfect for a crowd. That's kind of one thing I liked about this map was that all the places where you can kind of chill and hang out are pushed and tucked away to the sides of the map and the corners. So I thought that was a neat, neat touch. Also, also... That's another thing I was messing with in this map. I wanted to have more varied elevations in the floor. I wasn't sure how I was going to accomplish that. If I needed to make the base low, like, I'm sorry, I needed to make the base higher and then kind of go from there. That would require like stairs to lead up into the building or leave it flat. But I'm glad I left it flat because. It was just a lot easier to do a lot of elevation differences with just building up instead of having to worry about, you know, giving myself space ahead of time when the map build starts, so you know, just to go down or to be down. So, but I think next time I'm going to actually have it. Yeah, I'm gonna. Ooh, I should do like a a bathhouse, right? And do the bathhouse. A lot of the bathhouses and like you know, the pools and everything like that. You walk down into the pools. So I'll be able to keep the cool water effect that I do um, with the pools, but I won't have to worry about building like the walls per se that holds like a, it's like above ground pool, right? So I'll, I'll do that. I'll just, you know what? And if I don't want stairs to lead up into the building, I'll just level off the entrance and just consider that the actual like you know base ground of the whole map but yes i want to actually have a map where it's like fucking 10 blocks high and that that would leave me so much fucking cool room to play with the map dipping down oh gosh i think i think it would be most appropriate if i do like a bathhouse or a desert or like a snow area because I do need to make a desert area I mean it's already made but I can make it better right that would be really cool I don't think it would even be that difficult no it wouldn't that would be a really interesting <laughs> map to release though it's just like it's just a desert but it's got like all these crazy elevations and stuff like that I don't think it would be that bad so that would, that's something to think about, something to think about, for sure. Oh my god, I have so many huge dunes. And speaking of dunes, right? Whoops, I knocked over my water bottle. I saw that movie Dune, the new Dune movie. Where did I see it? Oh, at my house. <laughs> I've never seen the original Dune, but uh, personally, don't get offended, but personally, I did, I did not find myself enjoying the latest Dune. I just wasn't into it in the slightest. Watched the whole fucking thing very tentatively and quietly, and I was just like really, really bored. Although Josh Brolin is in the movie. 
So I just, which I didn't even know anything about the movie. I just heard it came out. So there's a lot of really cool actors in that movie. The Skarsgård guy, I think, is in there too. But of course, Josh Brolin is like number one. So. I don't really have a lot too much to say about Dune though. So <laughs> it's just like, I, I found it so non-interesting that I just couldn't be bothered to want to talk about it any more than that. Oh, but I did see a movie. What is it? Fuck. It's another, it's another like, oh, not a, it's not a movie there. It's um Cowboy Bebop on Netflix. I saw that when it came out. I was super hyped for it. Holy shit. That was, that was terrible. It's awful. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, so this map, yeah, stairs. This is where I was making the big stairs. And I knew I wanted the stairs to split off. But some, yeah, this is before I knew I wanted it all connected. But look, see how much space there is? That's fucking huge. So it's, it works out perfect. And I figured if anyone wants to like perform on the staircase, they could just close off that staircase and open the other one because there's two. But, excuse me, but they could also just let people freely walk down that one that people are performing. It's so big as it is, so... Just be like a really cool chill thing. Like everyone just knows the staircase is sometimes used by performers. Oh, you know what? You know what? I do have something to say about Cowboy, Be Cowboy Bebop, the live action one. I actually really, really enjoy the potential it has because it's so close to being a really good show. Not a, not, not a really good Cowboy Bebop, per se, but a really good show. They just need to, you know, not have so much of the vicious guy. That, that, that was hellish to sit through. A poor, poor man. Yeah, because I think Cowboy Bebop was um, one of the first anime I saw. It was like a handful that I kind of all watched in quick succession. It was like, yeah, it was Cowboy Bebop, Samurai Shampoo. Um, what was it? Code Geass, Death Note. Yeah, all kind of just bam, 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 like back to back. In high school when I first got introduced to anime, so that was cool. Speaking of that, I, uh, it's, it's so, 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 so much effort. And I'm thinking I could probably get away with it if, <laughs> if I just don't feel it, like don't put the ultimate amount of effort. Because like if you look at the map I released for Cyberpunk 2077, where I recreated V's apartment, like in hyper fucking detail, because I went into the game and just took screenshots of all the apartment and then just tweaked them in Photoshop and then put them into Table of Simulator. So that was like, you know, that was a bang on V's apartment. But it, that's, that'd be more difficult to do, like, say, if I wanted to make Cowboy Bebop ship, the Bebop, right? Like, if I wanted to remake the Bebop in Tabletop Simulator, one, it would be a vast amount of maps. And a lot of it is left up into interpretation because I don't know if there's, like, there probably is somewhere of, like, a highly detailed layout of the entire ship it'd be difficult to actually get the textures no, excuse me to get the textures of all the walls unless you know i actually go and like hand draw it or commission it which one i can't draw for shit 
um, and I'm not going to get that commission. That's crazy. So, like I said, I could just kind of go like the lazy route and just get it somewhat close to the shape. Not even sure if I'd even call it the bebop. I'd just be like inspired by maybe, or go for go harder in the inspiration aspect, and just make a spaceship that's kind of similar in certain aspects to the bebop. Just a thought I had. I'm definitely not gonna do that anytime soon, but probably in the future, I'll be a scumbag and uh, be making maps that are like really similar or at least in layout with my own assets, like close to the maps of certain, ugh, I hate saying the word, but I can't think of another replacement for it, like of certain pop culture things, you know what I mean? Like I was playing Resident Evil 4 recently and I, I was like, oh, you know what would be cool? If I made this in Table of Simulator, like um, I think I was playing the very last part of the game where you're on that island, I was like, oh, you know, it'd be cool if I remake this whole facility. I'll just make it in the chunks that you experience as Leon. I mean, it'd be really easy. I'm not saying I'm going to screenshot the all the assets for the textures because that's that shit's insane. I don't know if I'll do that ever again. <laughs> like, holy fuck. But at least, you know, you can have the layout with it won't be picture perfect, you know, industrial stuff, but I'll find industrial like assets online, kind of port them in. I don't know. I had that thought, and that would be kind of fucking sick, though, just to do. Or, like, you know, remake the entire castle from Resident Evil 4 and Tabletop Simulator. That'd be cool, but that would be a huge undertaking because that place is so fucking cool and it's so big. Gosh, I thought that would be so, so neat, though, to do something like that. Like, once, yeah, once we kind of kick everything off and we pick back up stuff again, like, we're fully operational, we're releasing, like, uh, fucking episodes of series, stuff like that, I think that'd be kind of neat to go, probably, probably start with something smaller and make something from, like, my favorite video game. Like, for instance, I thought about doing, um... Excuse me, I just slapped the shit out of the microphone. Like, my favorite game of all time is Deadly Premonition. So I was thinking of going through the game. Uh, I gotta find a version of the game that doesn't fucking crash all the time. Anyway, go through the whole game and recreate, like, every building in the town. And then map out the town <laughs> so just going going full on with it you have the whole map of the town and then you can load individual maps of individual things like you know, i could have the police department and the, fucking, uh, the junkyard and the fucking town hall and all that stuff i thought that would be really cool i came close to doing that so many times so many times came close to doing that but that would be it would be a big undertaking, but I wouldn't even say it would be that difficult because nailing the layout is easy. I think the only issue would be just like trying to stay true to the textures in the game. I would have to just recreate my own in Photoshop, um, very simplistic stuff, just to even keep it vaguely similar, just to, it's probably as far as I could ever get to that degree of detail, but we shall see. I think if I do ever undertake like a big undertaking of like recreating video game stuff, the Daily Premonition would probably be the first game I go to to recreate cinema. So, and then you could play the whole game in Tabletop Simulator. That that'd be really cool. Hell, just even have like hell, just even having like a whole small town to work with. Because I thought about doing that too. I wanted to have like a Shadowrun but you're stuck in a small town trying to solve a murder, like straight up like Twin Peaks. And it's just so, it's so off the grid that like technology it's just like doesn't work so hot and everything like that, right? So I wonder, because I still want to play Shadowrun, right? In like a futuristic slash modernistic setting and have all the stuff from Shadowrun, but you know, just 
for the idea of like having it secluded and more off the beaten path, like, you know, a remote town. Kind of try and find stupid excuses to remove the technology. I would kind of make a lot of that secludedness null and void. Yeah, I thought that'd be really fucking cool. I came close to doing that so many times as well. I thought up so many cool plots to have, you know, related to the small town, big city detective or whatever, FBI agent trying to solve a crime. Mm, that does remind me, though, I, I do miss making um, Shadowrun maps. There's still so many I would need to make, well, that I want to make, you know? I think it's just, right now, we're getting so close to resume the campaign that I, I, I think it, my efforts would be best put towards just making maps for that. Which led me to which led me to think, no, this because now I'm gonna have so many good maps. Ugh, sorry, ah, so having so many good maps lined up for the series, right? It'd be weird if <laughs> down the road the maps become shittier because you know I'm like in the process of planning stuff for the campaign and making maps for. It. The campaign that can't necessarily be released publicly and stuff like that, right? Oh, and of course the editing of the episodes, right? Like I won't have time to make maps look this good for the main campaign because if things weren't derailed by that winter storm, you definitely would not be seeing shit this good in the main campaign. Holy fuck, no wait. But what I was thinking was, <laughs> now that I have all this nice shit, I think I'm going to have to set aside some time between episodes um, to make maps. And what I mean by that is, I guess in the episodes, then it would be like sessions. So say if we're going to potentially have like at least a major key point that we're going to go to, like we know for sure we all decided on, we're gonna, it's going to happen. If, if I know I'm going to need more time to make that into a simulator and make it look really nice like these maps, I may have to delay sessions like an extra week not an extra week like a week because normally um we keep it with like we play once a weekend usually but that kind of varies so we'll just say we'll play once a week at some point one at some point one or another one fucking one day or people are free once i find people to play again and we find a day and time that works for everybody but yeah i, I think i want to keep that trend of just because that would be fucking insanely cool to keep maps looking so nice for any series that I release on the channel, you know? On top of the fact that, yeah, I would also have more maps to release. So it's like good content for the, for the, yeah, good content for the series, but also good content, a more good content for just to release publicly. So it's like, it's a win win if we can find a middle ground and everybody's kind of cool with sometimes having a delay by one one week because i don't think i would need more than a week to delay any one thing so and i don't think it would be consistent enough to where we would need to fucking delay a week like yeah like every fucking time so it's essentially like every two weeks you play it no no no, no that that's too much and that wouldn't even work out because as quickly as i edit the episodes i think i would definitely want to play way more often than just every two weeks two weeks is fucking nuts unless right unless we play D, &D once a week but we play for like an actual eight hour session like that's included breaks and eating and standing up and stretching like that right but the the usual like hey let's get together irl and spend the day playing D, D, like that's the usual time window that i always spend playing D, D in real life right so if we can pull off, because that's the idea, that's kind of my goal, is that I want to play D&D for minimum eight hours. Minimum. Because if it's going well enough, it usually goes over time anyway. If I have like enough content, we're just like riffing and we're having a good time. And 
everything's squared away, you know? So usually it'll spill out and go for like fucking 10 hours. That's happened so much in the past. I just, you know, fingers crossed that's, I can find that magic again with the right, with the right players. Because I think if playing alone, like playing solo, I'm going to have to take breaks. But it won't, won't be noticed whatsoever in the series or anything like that. Uh, like live, or not live, but like, you know, when they release. Because I'll probably play for like four hours one day and then play four hours the next day. Or, or like skip, like, you know, skip a day and then play four more hours. Just because I don't want to overexert my voice and like fucking... <laughs> because that's a lot of talking you know that's just me talking for eight hours straight are you insane fuck no dude you're crazy can't do that and like the four hours i do play i will definitely pace myself so it's not exactly like i'm even getting a proper four hours but the nice thing about playing solo is that whatever time you do play it's like it's all good content you're not going to be gutting it and trashing like hours worth of work or anything like that. So um, there is many upsides to that until, like I said, we can find people to fill the slots. And you know what's kind of crazy I thought about? I was like, holy shit, what if, um, uh, God, this is, something, this is something I don't want to talk about because it's like, <laughs> it's the elephant in the room I don't want to address. But I know I'll find a, a solution. But say it's, it looks highly likely, but, but like say I play solo for a good chunk of the series of D&D, right? And I grow attached to these characters and they're so integral to the story and they have all these side plots and you know they're embedded in the story, right? <laughs> and, then, and then I do down the road find other players to fill slots it's like what do i do do i add them like let's say i find the ideal number right like let's say i even find three players or two hell even two players to join me right what do i do with like sarah sean and nash what that's even if they're still let's assume they're alive and well right what do i do with them do i fucking just have them <laughs> go away can't do that that doesn't make sense that's not right ruin the story do i leave them there then then i'm then i'm role playing fucking two main characters and the other two characters no because i can't dedicate enough time to the side like the side main pcs that i control with the actual pcs because i enjoy dedicating all my time to the PC's experience too much. You know what I mean? Like the whole point of me being a dungeon dungeon master is like, yeah, I like having the game revolve around the players. I don't uh, personally personally I don't like self inserts. Like when I when I have other players playing the campaign, right? I don't really I I personally don't like self inserts, so I don't do that. Unless it's like out of great desperation. Like I say if I find one other person to play and I don't find anyone else for a while then I think that'd be the only time where I would let Sarah Sean and Nash both continue to be main characters and not just default to side NPCs but I would respect and love them too much to let them do to become like side NPCs where they just kind of only speak and they're always a tag along and they have no real say and power on the story so much as like a main PC right like you know what I mean? So, I don't know. I think I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I may just kind of split it into two different, like a, like an A plot and a B plot. So, I'll have, uh, which would be really interesting. So, it's like, okay, so if I ever, like, if hypothetically, if I do find other PCs to fill slots and stuff like that, then then they will be the new A plot of the story. And then Sarah and Nesh will go carry on with their adventures in the B plot. And I will essentially be running two different campaigns 
not ca- yeah like yeah in the same campaign that kind of like interweave with one another and by that i mean like i would still find days to record sessions with nesh and them and then <laughs> like it would be like yeah here's one one a couple videos of the pcs and then it's like meanwhile nesh and sershan da 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 that would be fucking wild i don't even know man it would just like jump back and forth between that and sometimes they would intersect and most times they wouldn't that would be very very interesting i'll definitely work out something that makes sense if if and when the time comes if by some miracle i can actually find players to fill slots then yeah i'll I'll work something out that's still respectful to Sershan and Nesh. But as things are going currently, I foresee them being the main characters for a while. Just because, uh, yeah. It's been, it's been tough finding people to play with that, uh, that I feel comfortable playing with that... I can I know I can like rely and trust. Uh not saying I don't I don't feel I didn't feel that way with like the people I played with before. I'm just saying like meeting people that you don't know, you never know what's gonna how they're gonna change from one day to another. Speaking from prior experience, I it's just like it's such a fucking sketchy roller coaster. I mean, the main reason why I don't have the players from the past is because I wanted to play eight-hour sessions, and we were we weren't playing for too long each session. So it was like we played once a week for like a very tiny amount of time, and then I was just like very like I was actually depressed. I was like I didn't I didn't like the fact that we were only playing for like such a small amount of time. And it wasn't even the fact that like oh I need content like that was not even on my mind. That's always like secondary to the game. Like the game is held above all else. But I was genuinely just sad that we weren't able to play and like explore the story for a long period of time each week. So I was just like so bummed out. So that's why we stopped. But of course, even if I wanted to pick it up now, um, everyone's life just got so busy so so busy it would just be it's an uphill battle to like sit down with them again but i want to so badly like i want to play more justice velocity with them because that's a that's a that's like a really chill series to have running on the background as well that'd be really easy to to do yeah like no problem because I got away with a lot of those sets, like those maps and that, from just like drawing on the table or rehashing Shadowrun maps with that. So, Justice Velocity would be so fucking fun to play again. I want to fucking goof around too. I'd lo- I love the play style that the other people that I did, that I had, like when Justice Velocity in the first series, the fir- like the first season on the series, on the channel. Holy shit. That was so much fun. Hopefully one day we'll get back into it. They um they have a they have found they they got this really cool uh I forget the name, but um they told me about it. It's like this really cool RPG tabletop role playing game that they um found that was like Cold War era, like the world ended and it's like stalker ish almost, but like in the eighties, some of that. God, I'm probably not doing it justice, but um yeah, they want to play that with me when I could play role-playing games again. And I really hope we get to do that. But I probably won't record it and put it on the... Jesus Christ, and brain farting. Probably won't record it and put it on the channel. But um, I'll probably maybe have a podcast talking about our adventures. Or if I do record it. See, so that's the thing. I, won't, I don't have a lot of much time left in this time lapse, but recording stuff that's not made by me I can't put it on the the channel. Like going for, I did it in the past, but I won't do it in going forward though ever again. Like, because all my assets are either handmade or they're uh, my my more recent stuff is either handmade or it's uh, 
from like royalty free image sites stuff like that so those are cool to put in because i can monetize those and they're all made by me i don't have to credit anybody else's they're all made by me and whatnot right like no credit needed and i can monetize it but all the old stuff i can't monetize and it's not like it's like my main thing it's just like i don't like using other people's stuff because then i don't want someone to get uh, all rant with me later on it's like dude i i know like a, i'm sorry i don't monetize it but i understand what you mean I, you're not even credit i'm sorry dude like yeah so i don't want to ever come in those situations in the future going forward say if like someone else hosts a game and they borrow maps and assets and art from people all over the internet it's like casual play it's fine but i'm trying i would like to put it on youtube but it's like i'd, I'd feel bad for doing that so um i've done like a lot of my old series that have stuff like that but I, i will never monetize those videos and whatnot yeah that's like my only dilemma as far as like playing and putting stuff on the channel for that you know what I, you know what i'll do i'll record that stuff and edit it and stuff i'll put it on my other channel and link that so my my personal channel will have all those cool adventures maybe the ones like those non-official ones um that we play when someone else hosts and they don't like have all the nice stuff holy shit i'm out of time my name is eric i'll catch you later bye